the war in Ukraine nears the year and a half mark this week, new reporting from The Washington Post is highlighting Ukraine's efforts to effectively deploy the cluster bombs provided by the United States. Speaking to Ukrainian soldiers, The Post reports the cluster bombs have proven useful in warding off Russian advances. As one soldier puts it, the main benefit of the cluster bombs is that the enemy is now very scared to go on assault. Joining us now with more on this story, national security reporter for The Washington Post, John Hudson. John, good morning. So obviously, just the very transfer of these cluster bombs and these munitions from the United States to Ukraine was controversial. Uh, a good number of Democrats voted against it in the defense bill. These are bombs that have been outlawed in many countries around the world. How are they being used and what is their significance on the battlefield? Yeah, that's exactly right. This is the most controversial arms transfer of Biden's presidency. So when I went to Ukraine with my colleagues and went to the front lines, we wanted to learn how they're being used. Uh, they're having a important impact when it comes to the defense of, of Ukraine. Right now, the Russians are pushing in northern, in eastern Ukraine. And when the Ukrainians are firing these against Russian infantry, it basically stops the assault. You have Russians immediately seeking hard cover, uh, and it's playing an important role in helping the Ukrainians preserve force power. It's also helping Ukrainians shoot into dense forests where they can't exactly see where their target is uh, and kill Russian infantry uh, that are exposed. Uh, it's also effective against unarmored vehicles and has caused a number of Russian convoys to scatter and scamper uh, in, in different levels of disarray. Uh, it's also having an important uh, impact on uh, helping the Ukrainians continue the offensive and stretch it out. As you know, the Ukrainians are low on artillery, and this supply is helping them beef up the amount of artillery that they have. Uh, at the same time, uh, there are concerns about what the unexploded ordinances will do when, God willing, this conflict comes to an end at some point. Uh, as you know, these bomblets can last for years and years. Uh, and some one of the artillery brigades I spoke to uh, said that there wasn't really an accounting practice in place. Uh, that obviously contradicts with what officials in Kiev and Washington have said, which is that the condition that the U.S. would send these cluster bombs was that they would be uh, well accounted for. Uh, so we've got a, a number of different ways that these are being used and some uh, continuing concerns about uh, what, how they might impact you, everyday Ukrainians uh, when the war comes to an end. Yeah, John, I mean, the reality is it's very hard for the Americans to keep eyes on what happens to those weapons once they cross the border and whose hands they end up in. Are these cluster bombs having any impact on the minefields that the Russians have laid? Because my understanding is that that's been one of the things that's really you know, stalled the Ukrainians in their offensive push, is that the Russians just had that much time to, to lay, you know, miles long areas with mines and that's stopping the Ukrainians get through that land. It's a great point. Uh, the minefields have been devastating to blunting the Ukrainian offensive, and it's why they haven't advanced as far as they can. Uh, these webs of trenches and mines. Uh, the, the difficulty with, with cluster munitions is that uh, they're more effective against infantry uh, that are exposed and up and around, as opposed to um, infantry that are burrowed into trenches. Uh, and so they've had some effect on, on blowing up uh, mines that are in fields, but that hasn't been the main purpose uh, and it hasn't been the main benefit. Uh, it, it's been more complicated. Really, the advantage is, is hitting exposed infantry, uh, and that's why you continue to have problems with the Ukrainians pushing further south and cutting that important land bridge to Crimea, even though they have this large arsenal of U.S.-provided cluster munitions. John, step back for a moment and just uh, overall from your trip, has the Ukrainian offensive stalled or is it making progress? Will we, at, at, at the end of it, say Ukraine uh, took back a significant amount of its territory, made progress toward cutting this land bridge or, or not? 
Uh, Eugene, these were very difficult discussions with troops uh, near the front lines. They are exhausted. They have been fighting for a very long time. Many of them haven't had breaks in a very long time. Uh, there is very strong belief in the importance of their cause. They're defending the Ukrainian homeland. Uh, but they, uh, it, is, it is not having a breakthrough. And that's, you just can't deny that that is the case. Uh, there was the hope that the Ukrainian forces were going to push far south, capture towns such as Melitopol, uh, and really prevent these Russian supply routes that are really feeding this invasion, uh, eliminating those supply routes. They haven't been able to do that. Uh, the offensive is not over yet, but it, it, is, uh, it is not going as far as Ukrainians hoped it would at this point in time. National security reporter for The Washington Post, John Hudson, thank you very much for your reporting and insight this morning.